Hello everybody, it's the 2nd of April, it's been a while since we last did a video, apologise about that, it's been very very busy. Um, and we're back down the land, uh, we decided to bring some um, ash chippings. Um, our communal garden was having some ash trees felled, um, again the dieback's getting everywhere, so there was all this lovely chip, so we've um, started putting it down on the paths just to make it a bit easier to uh, navigate. Um, and if it rains then you're not walking into mud. Um, the plants didn't do as well as we'd hoped, um, the reason being we put down some fresh grass cuttings and then got home and realised actually you're meant to let it dry out first, uh, we put fermented grass down so it's a learning curve, um, hopefully they'll bounce back, we just won't touch them now, just uh, let them do their own thing. Um, Kate came up with this ingenious idea, it's called keyholing, where you put a path into the middle of the bed so you um, you create an avenue which allows you then to <laughs> she's going to show you how it works creates an avenue in which you can then water and uh, weed and be surrounded by your plants yeah, like surround sound but yeah natural. <laughs> um, so today we're just working together on removing the rubble we've actually got quite far with it um, so check out the, <laughs> it's pretty the impressive hole. so um, we've dug it back we've actually found this like ledge so what I'm going to try and do is then um, put bricks down once we've taken all that out put bricks in fill it up and then the IBC tanks will go here so we can then put um, our drainage system straight into the IBCs and have water at the top of the land which and we then we use. And we also have some rockery herbs up here. And so rockery herbs. Even more edibles. Which will smell lovely in the summer. Yeah maybe some wild strawberries things like that. Um, herbs. Also up here um, the, the heathers that we got for, for cheap in the winter some of them are doing okay but I reckon they'll do better on the land somewhere so what I'm going to put along here are some yew saplings so the tulips coming up though they'll aren't they? certainly be away from where the ruminants and animals can get to them because yew is very very toxic but it'll make a nice hedge up here so more privacy um, so back down here along our path um, got a few jobs to finish off like filling in the step but that'll do for now um, go on Kate, show us the trees then. Okay, and also we have planted many, many trees, so we'll go through them now. Follow me. We've got a very first borage plant there as well. Yeah. Borage is... Borage is often used. If you, if you take leaves off it and put it in water, it makes a very stinky liquid fertiliser that is very, very good for your plants. We've so got purple sage. Got some purple sage. Yeah. There it is. Uh, some chamomile, which is called lawn chamomile, and this will grow and spread as a kind of surface cover. We're going to get plenty so, of it though, I think. Yeah, it's like it works like a natural mulch. Myrtle being little Miss Madam having a tantrum. This is beautiful. It's lemon thyme, and the lemon. A variegated like, variety too. Variegated variety. It's, del it's delicious. Right next to the uh, Russian tarragon. Yeah. Not as good as the French tarragon, but it's a bit more um, hardy. It's a lot more hardy. Yeah. So we went for that in, in the first instance. This is our lemon balm, that's starting to perk up and right here we've got some lovage. lovage. That will get very tall, it's, I think it's related to celery isn't it? Yes, so, yeah. we've got some rosemary, thyme, all the usual herbs. And uh, somewhere we've got some lemon verbena garlic. but it's not very happy at the minute so I hope it takes. Kate's uh, wild garlics are doing quite well, we weren't sure that they'd take because when they arrived uh, they weren't in the best state but you can just see there we've got some flowers coming up so yeah. Luckily they're perennial. I think yeah. just keep we'll just leave them yeah, to it. Just leave them to and it. just keep mulching. Yeah. As you can see, the ground is very dry. This is the only problem with brush cutting. We've exposed the ground. And also it's quite sand rich soil. It is. Yeah. yeah. So hence why we're mulching the lot. We've actually got a sandstone area. seam just under it's not even that deep, it's probably about I'd say twelve feet below us is a sandstone seam, so um we are gonna have quite a lot of sandy loam. Um which is great, but the only thing is it becomes very dry when, it, when it's exposed. So what we're going to try and adopt once we've weeded and got things in that we want in here, uh, literally just mulch the crap out of it, literally with crap. So um, yes. We have got plenty of nettle, so we are yeah. going to eat some, we're going to make some into tea. But we're going to have to rest. keep them in a patch of their own, I think. Yeah, keep them in a patch, but you, you can use them in the compost. I think they're quite rich in potash. We've also been litter picking, because there's been years worth of, uh, of litter. You can see it all along there. People just drive past and throw their litter out the cars. It's terrible. It makes you very, very sad to see, but... Um, our rule of thumb is that every day that we come here, we take away one bag of rubbish. So that's what we're doing. Come show the logs to oh, yeah. the building as so well. So much to show you guys. <laughs> yeah, we've done a lot in Sorry, two we're weeks. talking a mile a minute. But um, so this, believe it or not, will be our first log store. Kate is a log, very large log. I am a very large log. I'm so, air drying. 
So what we're going to do, we're going to get some metal hinges and pull all this together with some very long screws and then we'll put a roof on top and I'm actually going to put rubber on top of the roof and put um, more chamomile so it will actually sequester carbon even more. Compost! And we've got a compost heap, yes! So anyway, to the trees. This is the most exciting bit guys. Um, we actually got our trees, most of them anyway, from pound stretcher of all places and they are about two years old, the saplings. They had really good root systems and nine of them was 26 pounds. So we got really lucky. Um, there are a couple on here that weren't. They were off like spe specialist Etsy sellers. So we've got, what's that Kate down there? Okay, uh, oh gosh, we've got quite a few, haven't we? Um, I can't even remember. I'll, I'll remember when I have a look back at it. But I that's remember this, this one. That's a Szechuan pepper, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so toothache this, tree. Um, this is a Nepalese pepper. But Nepalese it's pepper, also sorry. also called the toothache tree. And if you come zoom in. Skew the dog in the background. She's uh, she's been eating poo on the land. So I've had to put it in the car for now. It has spikes on its leaves. You eat one leaf of this, and your whole face will go numb, so you can have your tooth extracted. That's exactly why it's called toothache tree. Yes. Um, so we've got some. Um, anyway, back to the trees from the pound uh, stretcher, Plum Victoria. Uh, we've got an, a Spartan apple, which are really small, really deep red um, apples, very sweet. Um, and they make really nice pressed apple juice, so we're going to try that. Got a apple cox's orange, uh, orange pippin. pippin, nice and reliable. Oh, and bear in mind, guys, these are all self fertile, so you don't need more than one. They will flower and fruit without any help from pollinators. Although, if you do have two, have you're likely to have a higher yield. Yes. Uh, yep. Got a czar plum. Got two types of plums, haven't we? We've got a Victoria plum as well, someplace. Uh, that's a, a brownie apple, which is a very slow grower. It's just starting to unfurl its leaves. A um, Morello cherry. Yeah, perfect so, for tarts. Morello cherries are very sour. They're known as a sour cherry. Um, and you often make them into glacé cherries and use them in cakes or um, into syrup. So, Got this one from Wilco. Stella. Now, Stella, you can eat straight off the tree. We've tried them before. Absolutely delicious. Six so, pounds for a tree. You can't go wrong. That's amazing. And that's what this one's doing really well. So, Got another cherry here. Cherry sunburst. This is a nice uh, eating, again, eating yeah. cherry. Um, bear in mind guys as well, um, I know they're planted close together, we are going to be um, opening up a bit more, we just needed to get them in the ground because they were so dry and we were worried that if we left them in their bags for any longer we would just lose the trees. So we just got them in the ground and then we'll consider more sort of, uh, with more thought put into it, we'll the distance. At the moment, aren't yeah, they? it's just about getting the collection in. Yeah. Um, we've got a lovely conference pair, um, they're, they're the pairs you often see in supermarkets. Um, they're quite firm when you get them and then they have a very sweet sort of honey flavour to them, so very nice. We've got a very nice old variety called William Bon Cretin. I don't know if I pronounced that properly, Shreshim, but... Shreshim, yeah, anyway. Right. Yes. There we go, so that's it so far. Um, and as you yeah. can see, we've got a lot of um, scrub that will need to be burnt. I'm going to get an incinerator, it'll cost about £30 for a steel incinerator. And then we'll just move it around the land, um, put a load of, uh, of this in, chop it down, burn it. Um, but don't let it go to white ash. What we will do is then pour water on it when it's black and then we'll have loads of biochar which will add to the compost. So Gemma, can you explain what we're doing today uh, for, for, for the so, entire day? So um, what we're doing today is filling in the tyres. So tier one was finished, oh God, uh, about half a month ago. Yeah. Um, and now the big job begins, filling them in and ramming the earth in, which is going to probably kill us. <laughs> so if you don't hear from us for about a month, send help. Um, and we're only allowed, I mean, we can only carry one bucket at a time because um, the wheelbarrow would be a bit too awkward. Yeah. And because of the terrain, it's just, it, yeah, bucket at, at a time. But we're getting there. We're about halfway through on tier one and then we can start uh, building up on And finishing by spiling. I and, mean, the spiling yeah. looks really good from this distance. I'm, I'm really impressed with it. So When it's like that all the way along, that's going to look And super. then just a couple of millimetres of soil over the top. And then eventually you won't be able to see it at all because the hedge will be there. So you have a really nice mature hedge. Kate actually bought some more hedgelings. I want to show you this. Oh, yes, I did. Um, we couldn't get them in because it just last last couple of weeks, the weather has been lovely but it's amazingly hot up here. We got up to about 22 degrees. It was unbearable to work in. It was shockingly hot for March. It was shockingly hot for March, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so it's a bit cooler. It's about eight, nine degrees today, so that, that's much more temperate. Um, but we've got some, uh, I can't remember what these are, Kate. Can you just? Uh... <laughs> okay, so here we have the, uh, this is a cherry plum. 
These are all cherry plums. So that's the wild one you see. They're often yellow or red, aren't they? Yeah. We've got the sea buckthorn. Very hardy. Yeah, and the berries are allegedly anti-cancer properties. Good for breast cancer. Not that we have it, but yeah. <laughs> it's good for medicine oh, and Myrtle. good for juicing. She's being so dramatic. So. I know, bless her. Uh, we've got, ooh, what's that? We've got, ah, wild, Is that the wild pears? pears. Yes. Now, we were really concerned these wouldn't make it because... Um, T truth be told this has been really stressful for us doing this job it's taken a lot out of us um we're aching in places we never knew existed <laughs> um so kate just bunged them in earth and hoped for the best and actually i think I we pray. got away with it we've got some really nice growth coming on just about so yes. we'll start separating them and basically I'm there'll be two up to each tire now. so as you can see we're filling it up this is all rubble from that pile over there um, so we got about, I reckon we shifted about three or four tons from there. That's upcycling, incredible. Upcycling, we're upcycling, upcycling everything. everything. Yeah, everything and anything. <laughs> um, and then the next job will be um, take all the wire down. Yeah. We decided we do need a gate up at this end um, for delivery. So when we have animals delivered or um, haylage or hay, straw, anything like that, no it's going to have to come down this way. There's no way they can just go the garden gate. There's no yeah. way. Yeah. So we'll just yeah. get blocks to um, allow a trailer up onto the curb and then down onto the land. We need to flatten this area here. Yeah, for this is going to be tunnel. a big job. Yeah, so this all needs to be flattened, but uh, that's okay. Ooh, what we've got coming up here, I think. What is that? I was wondering. Um, that looks like either Himalayan balsam or some kind of weed, which we probably don't want. Okay. I mean, it's, it's sad we look at certain plants and go, oh, they're a weed, but they are not in the right place for us. I mean, I can see there's a few um, brambles coming back. So, Just a few. There's nothing yeah. too taxing, but we'll go over it now with, with a scythe but or a mower. I've got a trick anyway. I've got an old lawnmower kindly donated to me by uh, David and Anne Berry. Nice petrol mower. Um, so I'm thinking, bring that on land, um, put it on a fairly low cut, and just mulch all the all this up a bit finer, because uh, we'll eventually have uh, about 20, 30 tons of topsoil delivered. Which yes, we are shifting by hand. <laughs> um, the reason we're not using machinery is the cost. It's about 300 pounds a day uh, to have someone with a digger. Um, and of course the access is not very good on this land as you can see oh, so it's not very sustainable either no. so we'd rather just but keep to the look at all this rubbish ethic. guys i mean we found this when we were brush cutting this is years and years worth of neglect and box gloves there yeah so this is this is basically what we're tackling at the moment is we take a ba away a bag of rubbish put in our bin a bag a day um, <laughs> i know most of it is recycling but we just don't have the time to do that so unfortunately it's just going in a bag but we've literally picked up dog poo, we've picked up, we've even found a tyre, All a sorts of strange wheel. things, yeah. You wouldn't believe the stuff we found in here, guys. Honestly, it's been kind of incredible. Mm. Anyway, enough talking. I think I spoke about a mile a minute. <laughs> but uh, yes, welcome back to Lavender Hill Farm. We're getting somewhere with it. So, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. See you soon.